Hi everyone, this is Veronica. Today we are going to talk about wild food plants. So these wild food plants are like they don't need any extra cultivation or domestication. They just grow in the forest and they are very important to the tribal communities and the forest dwellers as a source of food and livelihood. So we'll discuss in detail about these wild food plants in India and how they're useful to the tribals. We'll talk about a special tribe also, Soligas. For my video updates, you can follow me on Instagram and Facebook. This is a channel study IQ. If you're preparing for any government exam, a pen drive and tablet courses are also available. For additional information, you can call on these numbers or you can visit our site too. The PDF will be available in both the languages Hindi and English. Now, what is the relevance of this topic from examination point of view? See, in your mains paper too, it will be covered here. And at objective level, you should know what are wild food plants. Uh, how nutritional they are, what nutrients content they have, what are who are soligas. Subjective level, importance of traditional knowledge of tribals because tribals have a lot of traditional knowledge how to grow these wild food plants, how they are useful. They are predictable also, their cultivation is pre predictable to these tribals because of their traditional knowledge. Now, what are wild food plants now see wild food plants which are neither cultivated nor domesticated they constitute a special category they grow wild in forest as well as in farmlands and they are harvested by local people they act as a source of food for them the tradition of eating wild food plants to augment staple food crops they continue to present day for dwelling forest for the forest dwelling communities and the tribals forest remains the main source of food nutrition and livelihoods even today so we are talking here although there are many other tribes also but particularly we are talking about soliga tribe here it is one such community in the western ghat who use their indigenous tradition to eating uh, of eating wild food plants to augment staple food crops right now we'll talk about what kind of traditional knowledge these tribals have like soligas and their traditional knowledge about wild food plants now see soligas are one of the few remaining forest dwelling tribes in and around the forest of so here we are talking about the forest of biligiri which is in ranganath hills then there are mm hills then bandipur of karnataka and Satya Mangalam forest in Tamil Nadu. Now this study has revealed that the diversity of wild food plants consumed by soligas they have evolved over generation as a survival strategy. They relate the usage of wild food plants to seasonal plant availability and the status of these resources. Now these tribals can even predict the availability of wild food plants so here we are talking about availability with respect to microclimatic changes indicating a long-term intimate knowledge of their surroundings now see in addition to their role in balancing food baskets of the poor these wild food plants they play a very important role in maintaining the nutritional and livelihood security for forest communities during periods of drought and scarcity. So let's see what are the different examples of wild food plants. So according to Soligas, they get a variety of mushrooms there. Tender bamboo shoots are there. There are a lot of fruits. For example, jamuna, jamun, karnada, karnada wood apple custard apple their pronunciations can vary from place to place so these are jamun and karnada according to me uh, you can tell us the right way of pronouncing in the comments also by writing and then honey and tubers like dioscoria is there macal is there these are the honey and tubers there these honey and tubers they are harvested throughout the year in the hot dry summers these soligas they also use the leaves of certain fruits like many like seropegia and they even like mango jackfruit amla bale and tamarind they also act as uh, wild food plants that even if they are not cultivated and domesticated they grow and except rice the another food staple for the soligas which they grow the forests give them everything else even if they don't grow so they 
say that forest they depend so much on forest that even they don't have to depend upon anything else other than forest for food and their livelihood because if these things grow in excess they even sell them to the local markets from where they earn their livelihood so now what is the importance of wild food plants uh, why we are talking about wild food plants now just see for example the edible leaves of kadisopu and javanasopu in the forest they have a very high content of pro vitamin a so there is vitamin a so that is the beta carotene there are antioxidants present in them soluble protein is present in them so it is found that the leaves are rich in digestible iron zinc manganese right so lot of nutrients you can see in this wild food plants so tubers and fruits from the forest that are rich in vitamins and antioxidant they are high in demand in the local markets also so some of the tubers and mushrooms also have high iron zinc vitamins and antioxidant content and this is very important for the nutritional security of the country also as you know in our country there is food crisis always there are a lot of people who go to sleep without having food so if we start cultivating and domesticating and looking at these wild food plants from a view of nutritional and food security it can help our economy and our country a lot with respect to the food crisis so now what are the threats here see despite their role in food security forests are mostly left out of policy decisions related to food security and nutrition why i'm saying this because recently we have talked about a new draft policy 2019 where we are watching that lot of powers will be given to the bureaucracy and the forest right act 2006 will be hampered which was one of the remarkable act of 2006 so these tribal people and forest dwelling communities will suffer so forest foods are high in demand both in tribal community markets and nearby rural markets also though this may appear as an opportunity for economic empowerment of tribal communities if not managed well over harvesting could lead to degradation of forest and ultimately disappearance of these very species from earth now activities such as sown quarrying mining and development they pose grave threats to wild food plants and there are other threats also like commercial monoculture plantation so even in the new uh draft policy act 2019 commercial commercial plantations are given a boost which is not actually good for the forest land so the other threat is commercial monoculture plantation on forest land under afforestation and social forestry programs which are crowding out these wild species now see what could be the way forward here for wild food plants to be preserved for posterity the forest must be co-managed with the communities this is one of the biggest way forward that you can write in wild food plants mentioning them you can write them when you're talking about conservation of forest for the tribal communities the forest is not just a source of food but it is it is also part of their identity also their way of life is respectful for nature and recognizes diversity in different manifestations the tribal community a uh, relationship with the forest is one of the belonging rather than ownership they don't want to own the forest they feel that they belong to forest so the community forest management is good for the health of forest also and in the end i would say implementation of india's landmark 2006 forest right act should happen in letter and spirit uh, this act should offer provisions to involve communities in safeguarding forest resources and developing co-management plans and needed so rather than hampering this act we should bring bring in such guidelines and rules that this is implemented in its full spirit so this is the way forward so this is all about today's lecture if you have any queries you can contact me in on instagram and facebook thank you